In this tutorial, I will show you how to import financial data from Google Finance into Google Spreadsheet. And I will show you how you can get the stock information for the following parameters. The stock price, and yesterday's closing price, the day's change, day's change in percentage, the 52 week high and low, and also the volume, price to earnings ratio, earnings per share, and the beta and the currency. And finally, I will show you how to make a graph of the price development during the last 365 days. So let's start. So first we'll write in the ticker symbol, which here we'll use 3M as an example. And to get the price, we'll just write in Google Finance. Here we go. And then we'll call in the ticker symbol from cell C6. And then we'll just write price. And it will then automatically load in the price from Google Finance. And we can do the same with yesterday's closing price. We will write Google Finance and then we will write close EST for yesterday and then just hit enter. And you can see here then it loads in the data from yesterday's closing price. And we can do the same with the day's change. Again, Google Finance, C6 for the ticker symbol and then we'll just write change. And the spreadsheet will then automatically load in the change in the stock price since yesterday's closing price. And we can also get this in percentage if you want to. And that is again C6 for the ticker symbol, change, and then PCT for percentage. And if you want to look at the 52 weeks high, what is the highest price the last 52 weeks? We will just write Google Finance, C6 again, and then we will just write high. 52 and here you go and we can do the same for the lowest price the last 52 weeks and Google Finance C6 and again we'll just write low 52 and hit enter and then it's loaded so we can also do this for the volume and to do this again Google Finance C6 to get the ticker symbol and then just volume and then we'll just hit enter. And the price to earnings is the same. Google Finance, C6 to get the ticker symbol and then we will just write P for price to earnings and it loads it and here you can see it's 20. And to get the earnings per share, again Google Finance, C6 and EPS for earnings per share. And in the same way, we can also get the beta value, which tells how volatile a stock is compared to the general market. To do this, we just write Google Finance, call in the ticker symbol from C6, and then write beta and hit enter. And if you want to see which currency the stock is traded in, we also have the option to get that data from Google Finance. So we write Google Finance, C6, and then currency. Sorry, currency, here you go. And then we'll just load, and as you can see, it's traded in US dollars. So to get the final one, the graph, from the last 365 days, we'll do it a bit differently. We'll write sparkline, then we'll write index, and then we'll load the data from Google Finance, and we're interested in the price. So we'll write that here. And then we'll write today to get today's price and minus the last 365 days. And then we'll just fill out the rest with today and two and then we'll hit enter. And you can see it has made a nice graph of the price development of this stock for the last 365 days. So here you can make it a bit bigger so you can better see it. And that is really nice, but we also have the option to change this if you want to. So for instance, we can change the color and the chart type. So to do this, we'll use these brackets and we will then write chart type. And for the chart type, we'll choose columns, which we'll write here. And then we'll change the color and we want it in, let's say dark green. So we'll just write dark green and then we'll hit enter. And we will just make the last bracket. 
And you can see now the chart chart has been changed to to columns and the columns are dark green. So we can change this again if we want to to blue for instance. And here you go. And the great thing about this is that if you then change the ticker symbol, let's take Stanley Black and Decker SWK, then everything is loaded in automatically. This works really well for US stocks, but let's try to see if it also works for European stocks. So to test this, we'll write in Novo Nordisk, which is a Danish company. And as you can see, it cannot load the price to earnings, the earnings per share and the beta value for Novo Nordisk, which is a bit annoying. But uh, let's try another one, BMW for instance. And then you can see that the P value works and the earnings per share also works for this stock. Let's do a final one. Let's take L'Oreal, a French company. And we'll write it in here and you can see that again, the price to earnings and the earnings per share works. It thereby seems like Google Finance works well for stocks listed on the New York Stock Exchange, but it does not work perfectly for all European stocks. And the amount of data you get out of Google Finance is highly dependent on which stock you're actually looking at. In the next part, I will show you a stock screen I have created, which imports data from four different web pages and it works really well for stocks listed on the US Stock Exchange and also for most European stocks. This stock screen is available on my Patreon page, together with other tools for stock analysis and intrinsic valuation. You can find a link to the Patreon page in the description below. So this is my final stock screen. As you can see, it's divided into several parts. So up here we have the stock ticker symbol, where we can write in a stock ticker. So let's write Novo Nordisk that we had trouble with before. The stock screen will then load in the data from Novo Nordisk. And as you can see, we have all the data for, from the parameters here we tested before in Google Finance. But as you can see, the price to earnings and earnings per share, and also the beta value, now works since those are now imported from MarketWatch. And additionally, we have revenue per employee, which tells you how much revenue each employee generated for the company. And then we have the dividend information, where you can see how much dividend is paid out and also the current yield of the dividend and the ex-dividend date. To the right here, we have a graph of the price development of Novo Nordisk the last 365 days. But if we want to look at the price development over, let's say, 1000 days, we can just change this parameter to 1000 days and then the chart will load again. And as you can see, Novo Nordisk has steadily increased in price during the last 1000 days. And over here, you can see the performance. You can see the performance for the last five days, one month, three month, year to date, and for the one year performance. The bottom part of the stock screen only works for US listed stocks and it imports data from Finvis, which we have here. And then it also provides links to two sub pages on Yahoo Finance for your stock ticker. And furthermore, it will show the company information. So let's see if this part of the stock screen also works for US listed stocks. Novo Nordisk is actually also listed on the New York Stock Exchange and therefore we can write in the symbol for Novo Nordisk which is NVO and it should then load in all the data again. And as you can see the stock screen has now loaded in the data from Finvis which we have down here. And we have the price to earnings, the earnings per share and we also have the analyst target price which is the average one year target price the analyst has found. And furthermore we have the RSI. And then we have the dividend data where, for instance, can see how much dividend the company pay out per share for one year. And down here you can see the company information, so you can read about the company you're interested in. And if you click on this link, it will take you directly to the statistics page on Yahoo Finance, where you can see all the financial data for the company. The other link will take you directly to Yahoo Finance analysis page. And here, for instance, you can see the expected growth rate of the company. Furthermore, you can also see the recommended trends for this company, if it's a strong buy or sell. And right now we can see that no Nordic is rated as a strong buy. So, does this then also work for the other European stocks we tested before? Let's just test that. Let's write BMW. And as you can see, the stock screen now loads in all the financial data for BMW, including the price to earnings and earnings per share and the beta value. And if we then take L'Oreal as the final example, you will see that it also works for this stock. So again, all the financial data is loaded in, in this stock screener. So therefore this stock screener works for US listed stocks and also for European stocks. 
If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider to hit the like and subscribe button in order to get more content like this in the future. It really helps the channel a lot. And until next time, take care and have a great day.